Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jeremy, and this evening I'm going to teach you how to make fetcook. Now, if you don't know what fetcook is, fetcook is a South African bread. It's a dough with yeast that we fry in hot oil. So in this bowl, I have four cups of cake flour or all-purpose flour. You could use up to six or seven cups with one packet of yeast, but um, I'm just going to use four this evening. So if you want to do six, for instance, you would double up every double up. You would increase all the ingredients by 50% except for the yeast. I'm going to add to this one packet of yeast, two teaspoons of sugar, a teaspoon of salt, well, approximately. And I'm going to um, mix this with a spoon, just so that it's slightly mixed. And then with this dough, I don't use any oil at all because it's going to be fried in oil. So I'm going to add water. Now I'm not sure how much water I use, but I'm going to measure it this evening. So I'll definitely use more than a cup. So let's go with a cup and a half of lukewarm water and let's see what we have. That's not enough water. I'm going to add another half a cup of lukewarm water. Okay, that feels like it'll be fine. So I'm going to put my hands in there now. Now, and I'm going to knead it for, well, let's see how long. Okay, now I'm not going to knead until this comes off from the sides because you can see it's quite a sticky, tacky dough. Um, and that's the way I want it. If, if the dough is not soft, then we're not going to have soft um, fekuk at the end. So I'm just going to remove the extra dough from my hands and I'm going to put it in a warm place to rise. So what I need to do is, I'm going to oil a bowl so that the dough doesn't stick so much um, when I want to take it out later on. I'm going to oil my hand as well. And then I'm going to remove the um, dough from this bowl. I'm going to make sure that there's oil all over the dough and that the bowl on the side is oiled well for it to rise. I'm going to cover the bowl with a lid and I'm going to put it in a warm place to rise for one hour. The dough has been rising for an hour. Let's have a look. Whew, that's more than double. That's awesome. Now I need to oil the surface that I'm going to work on. Some people prefer to use flour, but I like oil. If you use flour and you're going to make a large amount of fat cook, then your flour starts burning in the oil. And as your flour burns in the oil, the oil gets black and then halfway through frying your fat cook you need to replace the oil so I don't want to do that so I'm going to oil my surface so I can work with it I'm going to just remove the dough and put it onto the oiled surface you don't need to knock the dough down it gets knocked down enough as you work with it I'm going to make a long snake and I'm going to form my fat cook with a whisky tumbler so what I'm going to do is, because the dough is so soft, it's nice and easy. So you want it high-ish. I'm going to put the dough into the tumbler, and you do that, and then you find, and then you find a piece of oiled counter, and you put the first piece of dough you've done over there, because when you fry, you're going to start and then move your way down, and then you just continue. So all the pieces of dough that have come off, you just sort of put back inside. And you really don't have to waste anything. So there's another new piece. Now, as I've told you in previous videos, I'm not really good at making things all the same size. So when I'm done, I've usually got big fit cook and small fit cook. And, um, but you just continue in that fashion. And yeah. If you don't like your fit cook as big as I'm going to make mine, because you can see these are going to be quite big. 
then you can use a smaller glass and you'll get smaller fret cook. So with the softness of the dough, it is so easy to just change the shape of them as you go along. So I formed my fret cook and now as soon as you form them, you start preparing your pot. Now traditionally people fry fret cook in a pan. I use a pot because it messes. With the pot's high sides, it messes less. So for those of you using waterless cookware, a stainless steel pot, they have a tendency to stick. Um, if you don't know this, if you spray them with a little bit of spray and cook or any of these sprays, before you add your oil, they don't stick. So they need to be fried in oil that's quite deep. The oil's about a centimeter deep. And I'm just going to wait for that to heat up. And once it's warm, I'll fry the fit. The pot is on medium high heat. To test whether your oil is hot enough, you can take a little piece of dough and just drop it in there. So it's not doing much yet, so it's not ready yet. But when that piece of dough comes up, when that piece of dough is cooked, you know your oil is ready. So I've put two pieces of dough in the oil and you can see that they are um, frying nicely. So my oil is ready. I'm going to add some fit cook. Give them some space to breathe because they do um, get bigger while they're in the oil. So while it's cooking, you can peep underneath to see if it's ready. And once it's um, changed color and it's a nice golden brown, you turn them over. Okay, let's just see how it looks now. Yep. I'm just going to let it brown on the first side again. Um, because the second side is a nicer brown and I'll take it out. If you want to avoid these um, slightly darker spots, you can use more oil. So don't worry about whether they are cooked on the inside. By the time that they are brown, they will be cooked on the inside. The dough is so light that um, it will be cooked once it's brown. So you don't have to poke a hole in it um, to see if it's finished. And that's finished. So I'm going to remove it onto some paper. I have serviettes just so that some of the oil can um, drain off before I, I move it into a different bowl. And then I just continue baking another four. So this temperature is still fine. It's not browning too quickly, but if it was browning any quicker or if, if it was bubbling more than this, I would have turned the temperature down. But the fat cook are finished. I have all of these that we are not going to eat and those that we are not going to eat. So there are 11 extra. So what I'm going to do with those is I'm going to freeze them. If you want them to be as fresh as they are, going, as they are today, then you have to wait till they've just, just reached room temperature and then freeze them in plastic bags. And then when you want to have them, take them out of the freezer and defrost them on the defrost setting in the microwave. Then you'll have a soft fake cook to eat when you defrost it. Different people like different fillings on fake cook. I'm going to show you how I fill these fake cook because this is going to be our supper. So I'm not a big fan of fake cook with minced curry, but um, it's very popular in South Africa. So I'm going to put minced curry on two of these fat cook. We don't do butter on fat cook. Many people do, but I feel like they're oily enough. So that is, um, some people call it a curry bunny. And with the other two fat cook, I'm going to do fillings that I like. So we're going to have jam and cheese. This is apricot jam, regular store-bought apricot jam. And I'm not going to pretend that I put so little on. And I'm going to add grated cheddar to that. Great. There you have it. Fed cook with mince and fed cook with jam and cheese. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed the video, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. And then I will see you next week.